Morning, Jing. Good morning, Alex. Well, or good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Things probably seems probably getting quiet after KubeCon and then the holidays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> So about this uh, dragonfly due diligence, uh, now is it uh, up to us to do it or is it, uh, the, did they still need a TOC member to do it? I'm, I'm still a little confused by that part. <laughs> um, so, so the background to this was that um, dragonfly had presented to the TOC and they had um, and the TOC said it would be good if the storage SIG could do a review. So Dragonfly then presented to the SIG and yeah. um, we had some concerns and we had some queries which which they which um, was documented by the project team but we never actually formally put our concerns or sort of queries down on paper so so i think i think we it's basically on us to to document them at this stage okay um, and i was um i was just going through the recording of their presentation to kind of remind myself of some of the some of the queries okay Hi, Erin. Hi, Sugu. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Steve. Hi. And we have Amy as well. Um, Quinton said he was going to be delayed by a couple of minutes, um, but he will be joining. I'll just give it a couple more minutes. It looks like you have a nice view, Alex. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's already getting dark here. We'll just give it one more minute. I have received um, a few apologies um, already, and Quinton said he was going to be a little late. But apart from that, I think we should be good to go. So, so, um, so let's start. Um, the first thing um, is, could if if you could all open the the meeting minutes, um, which I've put into the chat window. Um, I've, I've put um, like a little clip at the beginning of the meeting minutes um, to kind of uh, have a running uh, status of things which are um, things which are on deck for the SIG. Um, and this is something which um, I'm hoping the co-chairs can keep up to date and that way we have a an easy way of updating the, the TOC deck um, when when they need an update, um, but also helps us with uh, helps us to to have a quick reference of things which are in play at the moment. 
Um, so the first thing on the agenda is, um, which I'd like to bring up is um, the Dragonfly project. Um, so just as a just as a refresher, Dragonfly um, presented to the TOC in August, um, and they uh, the TOC said that they needed some input from the um, from the SIG to help with their um, with their process. So so Dragonfly. Is a little unusual. It's 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 a it's a container um, uh, container registrar or registry um, similar to, to sort of the Quay project and, and Harbor, I guess, in some ways. Um, although it's it's sort of a more generic um, file distribution tool as well, um, and uh, and therefore you know there was some confusion as to which SIG it would actually fall into, but they but they asked the storage SIG if we could have a look. Um, the, the project um, presented to us um, on the 28th of August this year. Um, and in the meeting minutes, you'll find a link to the, um, to the recording of that um, presentation. During the presentation, we had some feedback and some questions which, um, which the project team um, collected in in a doc together with some answers, but I don't think they captured all of the um, all of the questions that we had or all of the concerns that we had. Um, now they've raised the PR and the due diligence doc to move from sandbox to incubation, and I'm just concerned that we, since we haven't formally replied back, um, our feedback might uh, be missed. So I was um, I was hoping that anybody who had some notes from the presentation from back in August, and I do realize it's been a while now, um, um, could, or if, if you have time to re-review the, the recording um, and put some notes down together. I was just in the process of, of doing that, um, of doing that today, and I'll share them around with, the, with, with this team. Um, but I could really do with one or two other people just just um, uh, trying to uh, trying to have a look as well and reminding themselves. Um, I don't know. I don't know who else um, was present. Was it? Was any of you? Were any of you guys present at the presentation that they did on the twenty eighth? I think I was, Alex, and I. But I will listen to the recording again because. Yeah, top of but, my head, I don't feel like I can give constructive feedback. So, no, I know. I, I at, at the time I had jotted down some notes that there were some security concerns and some question marks about consistency of files and things like that, which, which um, I think probably merit um, merit sort of being brought up. Um, you know, even if the project team sort of turns around and says that they're working on it, that's that's probably a good thing, but um, at the time, I recall that we had some some question marks whether it should move forward into incubation, and I, I don't just and I just don't want to talk to kind of move forward on autopilot just because we haven't provided feedback yet. I thought Quinton had some reservations about it, so I think we should make sure we, we yeah. capture that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Have um, you gone through a security review? Not until you go through graduate to graduation do you go through the oh, formal. Okay, so that's not required yeah. for incubation. Okay. Correct. Um, <clears throat> but that's a good point. By what measure do we look at that? Is it worth taking our concerns to the security SIG? I, I don't know. I mean, I think that process is still being formulated. I don't think it's a bad idea if they have time, but I don't know what their backlog looks like. Yeah, I, I, so, I, so I think, you know, the, the bar to move to, to incubating is, is, you know, at least we, we have to feel that it's going to add value to, to the field. And I think if there are some, some sort of significant concerns either around sort of things like data integrity or, or security, I think I think it's worth it's worth mentioning them, because um, 
you know, there's there's no harm in the project remaining in sandbox for for uh, you know some more time if if they're able to address some of those issues first, um, because incubating does kind of put a CNCF stamp of approval on it, and I, and I don't think the CNCF should be um, kind of approving things where where there are concerns from the tech leads, or at least that would be my hope anyway. <laughs> Um, so, so yes, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my notes together, um, in a, in a Google doc, um, and share the link out to the, to the mailing list. And if anybody else can then add on to that, to that doc, that would be really appreciated. And then we can link it back into the, into the PR for the project, um, so that the doc has the information. Any other questions on that specifically? No. Okay. Um, the the second thing um, I'd like to um, I'd like to just um, provide an update to to the rest of the to, to the rest of the team is um, uh, a bit of an update about some of the process and workflow. Um, that that uh, some of the process and workflow discussions um, that we've been having. So, and, and Aaron, please keep me honest here. Um, we we had some we had some uh, initial discussions before KubeCon, and Aaron had put together a sandbox process template, um, which which had some discussion in the talk, and then we had a face-to-face -face meeting um, between the different um, SIG leads and um, and some members of the talk while we were at KubeCon. And Liz has put um, a document together to to, um, to minute some of that meeting. Um, and following that, uh, Jiang Li, who's the, the talk liaison for the storage SIG, um, has um, has uh, said that it would be a good idea for us to to have uh, regular updates um, and regular discussions about some of this, so that we can we can formalize some of these processes um, and workflow for things like um, um, doing project reviews and um, providing feedback into into the TOC processes. Um, so the first the first meeting with with Jiang will be. Um, straight after this SIG call, um, and we'll keep the we'll keep the team updated with with um, any updates that that happen there. Erin, did you have anything to add to that? No, I think you gave a great overview of it. So thank you. Okay, cool. Oh, hi, Quinton. I see you just joined us now. Um, so, Quinton, just just for your benefit, we we had a quick discussion about the Dragonfly project. We were we were um, we've uh, agreed that we're going to collate some notes. Um, I recall that you had some concerns when we had originally um, seen the presentation of of Dragonfly. So, when I circulate the notes, if um, if you could uh, add to, to that or annotate the the notes, that would be useful. Sure, sure. I'd be I'd be glad to do that. Um, very happy to. Um, on, on that topic, uh, as a general topic, I was just thinking about this. Uh, we've, we've dropped the ball on a couple of these things and some of them are probably my fault. Um, so this is not, not blame storming by any means, but I was wondering if we don't want to elect a secretary uh, as, in, as in a company secretary. I don't know what the term in America is, but I know in Europe they have this concept of a company secretary uh, who just kind of his job is to make sure that the company like does all the things that they're supposed to do on time um, you know things like filing regulatory stuff and and financial statements and this and that and the next thing um, and typically runs the board meetings and things like that um, do do we want to perhaps elect a, a secretary whose job it is to make sure that that we record everything that we promised to do and that that somebody you know gets allocated to do it and it gets reallocated if necessary, all that kind of stuff. Um, or I mean, if if one of the chairs wants to do it, that's fine. 
uh, I don't personally have, have the time to do all of that stuff. Um, and I suspect that some of you don't either. Um, and so maybe we want to elect such a, such a position, formalize it in, in the SIG, to just sort of opening the idea up for comment. Um, I, I, I don't think any of us have time, but I think it's needed, but I don't know that it has to necessarily be one person all the time, I guess is what I would yield to. I mean, I told Alex, I would, you know, help by being a co-lead rotating through creating the agenda and providing status to the SIG. Maybe if we could, or the tech leads could help rotating, doing that, um, you know, taking the action items from a meeting and following through and we just have it as like round robin. I don't know, just a thought because I know everyone's equally as busy. I don't want to just pile on a bunch more responsibility on the one person. Uh, yeah. And I was suggesting a, a new, an additional person. So not, not the chairs or the SIG leads. I mean, the, the problem is with these rotating things, unless some individual is kind of like keeping tab on, on who's actually doing these things, they fall through the gaps, which is what's been happening. Um, and, and as I say, this is not blaming anyone. I'm probably as much to blame as anyone else. Um, but, you know, if everybody's too busy to do that reasonably simple job, they're probably too busy to make sure that it gets handed around properly as well. Um, so I think, I think we, um, I, I mean, certainly look with Dragonfly, we've, we've, um, we've well, it, it slipped through the cracks. We, we, moved, <laughs> we moved on to other tasks before finishing off that task, basically. So, um, I mean, there are two things I think we should just become more disciplined as, as, a, as, a, as chairs, which is one, we should probably, you know, review the previous meetings minutes and make sure that we've closed off things. And if we haven't, keep them on the current list. The, the other thing that I've done just to keep things um, sort of semi-sane is at the top of the meeting minutes, I've just added a list of things that are in play. Um, and I think we should keep that list of things which are in play um, at the top of the meeting minutes um, as a, and just updated it for, during, for, at every meeting as a simple way of just not losing track of things. Because I think what happened with Dragonfly is we, we just moved on to other stuff and forgot about Will. Oh, that, that's up. fine. I mean, Alex, I, I feel very guilty that you you are carrying a lot of the burden of the SIG in general. You're doing you know, some of the work of the SIG leads and certainly some of the work of the other chairs, including myself. Um, so, I mean, conceptually, I'm totally fine if you're basically taking this job as, as company secretary, um, but, but I, I really don't want to, you know, over overuse your your charity uh, with regards to all of this work <laughs> that's very kind I, I it I don't think it's I don't think it's a I don't think it's a big problem I think if we just keep this um, the work in progress updated um, will things won't fall through the cracks and okay. and it, it and feels like dragonfly is really the only thing that's really fallen through so far yep and and I will rotate with you every other time on that Alex I'll do the SIG update as we talked about, and I'll do the agenda. We'll just switch All off. Right. All right. So then at least it's half the work and maybe between the two of us, we can make sure stuff doesn't fall through the cracks. But I agree, this was, I think this was an anomaly. Um, it was a super busy time for everyone. So we'll just make sure it doesn't happen again. Agreed. Okay. Um, so, so that's Dragonfly. That's the work, uh, the the process and workflow. Um, so, recap of the work in progress. I think some of this stuff is um, um, is a bit slower than we had hoped, mostly because of KubeCon and Thanksgiving and a couple of other things um, the last couple of weeks. But um, I just want to do a recap of the other documents that we have uh, in progress right now. So. Um, just going from back to front, the the database doc that um, Suku was updating, we had had a fair amount of discussion, and we've loaded up the the um, the document with with comments. Suku, I believe you were um, 
on the case to to uh, to turn the comments into some paragraphs, right? Yes, I will uh, find time for that in the next uh, one or two weeks. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's that's uh, that's really useful. Um, um, yeah, I mean, if we if we can if we can aim to to so the next SIG meeting is Christmas Day, so which obviously means it's not happening. Um, so the the one after that will be um, the 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 one in the first week of January. So um, if we could try and target. Um, sort of mid-January for some of these things, it would be really good. Um, similarly, on the performance and benchmarking document, um, I've put some work into um, some of the content around the uh, the uh, the uh, things to watch out for, um, and Fadim has put in um, some of the um, uh, information for the for the um, database benchmarking. I know Nick Connolly um, is working on the volume benchmarking section. Um, so there is some progress, but it's it's obviously slowed after KubeCon. So we'll, um, we'll be following up on that and again, try to get something for, for uh, the middle of Jan. Um, and then we have the the use case doc. I don't know if is Luis on the call. No, Luis isn't on the call. All right. Um, so in the use case doc, I think we we talked about um, last time we we added in um, the information to keep the use cases um, somewhat generic, but also provide um, information from multiple projects um, and we had a bit of a debate about how to make sure that this wasn't seen as some sort of CNCF endorsement but but the, the main point was that what we were talking about here was um, patterns and not endorsing you know specific um, specific projects so we were talking about um, having use cases for perhaps specific databases or specific um, things like i don't know kafka or prometheus or or etcd or whatever else and and saying you know based on the attributes from the landscape and based on the types of um the different types of storage that that we've identified those would be the appropriate patterns to use um to to say optimize for performance or to optimize for consistency or whatever else um, and there may be more than one option uh, and I went through and sort of re-listened to the minutes just to make sure I was clear on this. We we agreed that there might be that there that there will be more than one option, depending um, on uh, different optimizations that that might apply for those particular use cases. So I know there was a lot of debate in the previous call just before KubeCon. I just wanted to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page now and there isn't anything else outstanding because I'd really like to get some of these um, some of these uh, use cases um, documented so that we have two or three examples and then kind of share it out to the wider community in the hope that um, that we that we get a bit more feedback from this once we have a few templates is Luis still leading that then I mean who's responsibility I'd, I'd like to see maybe the tech leads and we probably need to nominate another new tech lead as well out to help with that I, I mean I know Luis was starting with the first one but uh, maybe we we re-review that and then go on to you know assigning out some of the other use cases what do you think yeah I mean that's that's fine. I, I think Luis was Luis was the tech lead that, that had put the template together originally. Um, he's obviously not available today, but um, I don't think you know. I think he's still he's still on the case. We can follow up with him on on Slack. Um, but I think there certainly is the um, there certainly is the opportunity, perhaps for another tech lead, perhaps Shing, if you have time, um, to to put together. Um, another example um, based on the, the template or the document that Luis had started putting together. 
Yeah, sure. I can take a look and help with that. I mean, and it would be it would be good then if we can discuss it at the next call as well. Okay. Uh, next call is it Christmas time, <laughs> or is it uh, in the New Year? The next call will be in the New Year, so that would be the eighth of January. Okay. Yeah, I should uh, get that ready by then. Alex, to to answer your your previous question about uh, any concerns or whatever, um, I I just had a question, which is if I understand the the sort of plan correctly, it is. Uh, in, I just had a very brief look at the minutes. I wasn't actually aware that there were such things for, for the separate set of working group meetings that happened. It sounds like. Um, so it seems like they were focused on applications, meaning um, you know there's already a decision being made. Well, so they, they used the word applications, which I think actually meant system components, things like Kafka or, um, you know, etcd or some kind of thing that needed some kind of storage. Um, and then they tried to figure out, you know, what, what options you had. And I think in the initial example, they used a specific, whatever it was, block store or something to back a specific uh, system component. Um, when we originally spoke about this, I, I had a slightly different idea in my head, and this, not to say that we have to do this, but, but I just wanted to bounce it off the group, um, mm -hmm. which is that users have a more general requirement than, you know, I need etcd or I need, um, you know, Kafka. They usually uh, have a requirement for, you know, a key value store um, or a, uh, document store or, or an object store or something like that. Um, and then they have, you know, the implementation of the object store is the one question. Some of them are distributed, some of them are centralized, some of them are, you know, higher durability, blah, blah, blah. And then also those things typically are layered on top of other pieces of storage. And so there are further choices there. So I, I was sort of imagining that 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 might be the avenue that we attack it from. What is your actual general requirement? Um, and then what are the various permutations of, of you know, higher level and lower level storage systems out there, uh, approaches to storage, and then maybe some specific examples that, that are better or worse for these for these for this particular use case. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. So I think we got ourselves tied up in knots last time because we were, um, because you're right. <laughs> I think there is, there is um, a difference between um, applications or use cases that consume storage um, versus some of the things that are actually providing persistence also using other types of storage, right? So, so, so on the one hand, perhaps you have, I don't know, something like Prometheus or something like etcd or something, or no, etcd is the wrong example. You might have something like Prometheus or something like Kafka, for example, which are, which are probably more in the application side of the bucket. Mm -hmm. um, and they are consuming some backend storage, which could be a file system, it could be an object store, it could be a key value store, whatever it is, right? Um, and then on the other hand, you have um, perhaps things like um, Minio, which is an object store, but is probably consuming volumes from somewhere. Or you, perhaps you have a, a database, which is a persistent layer in its own respect, but is probably um, consuming storage again from somewhere. Um, and I think I think we, we kind of got into a really r r sort of tight loop debate about this because the example that Louise put together was about Minio, and therefore it was sort of it, it looked like it, we were promoting Minio as a storage system, and and that 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 was sort of um, I think the root of some of the debate. What I what I really think we we need to do for this to be usable is to take into consideration the specifics of particular use cases. So so for example. Um, just, just to pick an example, if we wanted to say um, Prometheus, say because that's a CNCF project and it's and it's a use case that needs to consume large amounts of storage, 
So, so we should be able to say, look, this requires a volume in the file system. Um, you probably are going to have multiple instances of Prometheus. Therefore, you need to figure out how to have um, volumes on different nodes. The, the, the IO profile of Prometheus um, requires uh, uh, throughput optimization versus latency optimization, for example. Um, because you have replicas in Prometheus, you're probably not particularly focused on um, the, the strongest consistency, perhaps. You know, and and you kind of then provide the criteria that you should look for in a storage system, right? So that would allow you to choose storage systems that can provide that functionality. Yeah, so that that's sort of what I'm saying. I guess the subtle difference between what I was trying to say and what you're saying is you're focusing on Prometheus. What I'm saying is Prometheus is an example of a of a metrics collection system. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them. Most of them have similar requirements. They don't have strong consistency guarantees. They do have high throughput requirements, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I would have no problem at all using Prometheus as a sort of canonical example and saying, therefore, uh, here's an example of a good way to put in a monitoring system for mm -hmm. our example, Prometheus on top of X, Y, Z. Um, but I don't think that we should be too, get too carried away with Prometheus. It's sort of, one, it sounds like we're promoting Prometheus, which is not really our responsibility. And two, I don't think we would be communicating the generality of, of the recommendations that we're making, which is that, you know, these kind of monitoring systems typically need these kinds of storage and, and yeah, there are good examples of how to do them. I I thought we talked about this though when we went through Luis's thing that that was the changes we were going to make is we were going to be more generic um, and that we would then under the exit we were going to add a section that said like um, examples of this use case and there we would provide things like Prometheus so we were going to generalize out the use cases because we all agreed that it shouldn't start off with like Minio on this blah 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 and then I, I thought we already went through this so i guess i'm confused you, you might be right it, it just sounded like it was what i just thought was different what, than what alex described we were going to do so i wanted to just clarify that so so i i, I think we're confused because we probably didn't nail the debate last time um i i, I think you're right we should we should start with the generic and then i i, I think what we agreed was that we would do the generic and we would have some examples of what that generic use case covered. Um, I would like, uh, and I'm kind of open to this, but I would like to kind of go one step further. So if, if you imagine this to be a directory structure in a repo, I would love to have the generic, but I will also love that the, um, the actual project owners that um, for that category are able to write a more specific example that defines best practice for that specific example too. I would I would love it if it would evolve into that eventually. You know, so but, so for example, okay. yeah. yeah. So so for example, you know, if the generic use case was like you know log monitoring and and the, these are the things that you would like to do, it would also be awesome. Then if we go one step further and say. Well, actually, if you're doing Prometheus, um, yes, a file system optimized for throughput is important, but you should look for a file system that can handle, I don't know, these type of block sizes or these type of file sizes or whatever else, you know, because they're they're optimizing for some specific things that are specific to that to that project or to that use case. Um, yeah, and and I can imagine, you know, Prometheus on a on a five node cluster might look different than Prometheus on a 50,000 node cluster. Um, right. We could have two, you know, different case studies for those two extremes of the, of the spectrum. Uh, that sounds fantastic. So, so I think then what you need to do is perhaps, uh, as Aaron pointed out earlier, perhaps start sort of shouting this stuff out to, to the right groups. Um, and, and that seems to imply, you know, creating that directory structure that you mentioned, um, perhaps uh, starting with the, you know, the, the 
not the leaves of that directory structure, but the, the, the trunks, <laughs> um, the, the, big, the big use cases, figure out what those are, relational database, key value store, you know, monitoring system, document store, whatever, whatever those things look like. Uh, at least, you know, draft out that thing and then start, you know, electing perhaps a tech lead for each one or something like that. So we can that's, start. That's yeah. a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, shall we, shall we, um, let me, let me add the notes to the minutes for that. Um, uh, so list the trunks for the use cases. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share out a, um, a Google Doc um, after this to the team and maybe we can start brainstorming the, the things that we, um, that we want for those general use cases. Awesome. Sounds brilliant. All right, that's fantastic. Um, so those were the main things we had in the agenda. Um, Amy, did you have anything from the CNCF specifically, if you're still on? I think if you're talking, you're probably muted. I'm gonna try a different mic. Okay, a different mic I hear you now. Cool, it's a different mic, it's fine. Good morning, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, the question that was around um, Amsterdam and if we wanna be able to do a storage day there. Ah, yes. Yes, that was it. <clears throat> That's a good point. Um, so. I, I, I have a suggestion, if I may. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I found it rather fascinating, the giant swing in focus and like I went to CNS day and it was like very customer focused, very use case focus, you know, what people are seeing, what vendors are doing. And then I go to the cube storage SIG and, and we're very like high level design. And I understand they have different purposes, but I, I, I wish we could find a way to be able to kind of meld those two together where, we get to hear from community and customers what's missing and what's needed compared to what we feel like we're driving in the in the SIG, in the Kubernetes SIG particularly. Just a suggestion. I don't know if that can happen, but. But I just, I'm afraid that we won't have enough time even for the SIG storage face-to-face -face for that one day. We couldn't really finish discussing all the topics we want to talk about. So um, if we combine them together, then we'll be even having less time, time for those type of discussions. So I think we do need to have multiple um, events or okay. so, know, more time, I think. So, so let's, let's look at it slightly differently. Um, I think that there are sort of two things that need to come together for these events. One is who's organizing it and two, who the target audience is. Um, for the last three KubeCons, we had um, set up this, this cloud native storage day. Um, and this was um, largely, um, I guess, sponsor driven because when we set up the first cloud native storage day, it was probably the one of the first co-located events and we had a 400 people waiting list and that kind of then spurred on all the, sort of co-located days that, that that started up in Barcelona and then the explosion that happened in, in San Diego, because I think there were 34 or something different events, which was kind of nuts. Um, but um, so so we're going to go ahead, you know, the sponsors who sponsored the last three are, are kind of getting together and um, and we'll be get, going ahead and, and probably sponsoring a, a, another cloud native storage day too. Um, and that focus is is all about sort of the practical implementations of cloud native storage. So we, we tend to get um, end users together, discuss um, actual use cases, discuss 
day two problems, discuss um, you know various implementation details and examples, and have demos and a variety of other things. Um, and it's kind of a mix between you know what the sponsors provide and what the what the end users provide. Um, so so it's 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 a very pragmatic you know how to type of session as Aaron mentioned. Um, the the cube uh, the, the cube sig um, uh, face to face meeting is obviously all about well the technical design and and specking and scoping of features and things like that um, and is very very developer focused. Um, and the question therefore is, you know, what role, if any, do we want the CNCF SIG to have in organizing something? Is there an appetite to organize something? And if so, who would be, who would be the target audience? Because um, the question mark I have is, you know, we're, we're kind of neither specifically technology project focused, nor are we specifically end user focused. Um, and I don't want to sort of create uh, logistical processes for the sake of creating logistical nightmares. So I guess uh, my thinking about that, this is also how much work one of these things is going to be to be able to move it over to the SIG, whereas we've already got kind of like the cloud native, like security day, uh, sorry, storage day just kind of happening on its own and figuring out ways to be able to have this group participate in that without taking on all the heavy lifts. Yeah, well, well, th this is kind of what I mean. The, you know, I, I, I was chairing the content committee for the for the cloud native storage day, and that's a lot of work. <laughs> um, and and, you know, we already have like a lot of cooks in that particular um, kitchen, um, and it's 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 a bit like herding cats sometimes. Not to mention that these deadlines start pretty early in January. Well, actually, you know, come to think of it, the deadlines have already passed, right? So the, the deadline for registering contracts for these colo events was December the 4th, I think. Yes, yes, that was previously. I mean, we, we work to be able to actually have some flexibility if the SIGs want to be able to participate directly, which is why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, so, Alex, I noticed that this time in the CIS day, there's no community session right previously we do have like a csi session and i see there are discussions to whether have a uh, cncf uh, 36 session or a csi session but then it got dropped probably there are just too many contents already i guess <laughs> yeah so so we had we had a lot of content and we decided to drop the csi session so the last the the, the previous two times we had a csi session this time we, we decided to drop it because a CSI has become a lot more well understood. B, we kind of wanted to fit in more end user content. And C, there were already a number of CSI related sessions in um, uh, in, in, in some different KubeCon talks and in the Kubernetes SIG sessions um, during KubeCon itself. So we kind of felt um, there wasn't there wasn't a huge amount of benefit sort of forcing it mm -hmm. in there yeah. as well. Yeah, and also because all the developers are in the other location, right? Yeah. It's not not in the same hotel, so that's also a challenge to travel if you want to go to both. It's kind of hard. Yeah, indeed, so, indeed. Yeah. I mean, poor poor Erin was was jumping. <laughs> oh, okay, she went to both. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, uh, I wonder. Uh, if uh, it's beneficial for CNCF to sponsor like a like a customer feedback session to uh, six, like in this case, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, the Kubernetes six storage. Um, so this way we can get some feedback. That's a way for developers and the customers to be together. So we but it doesn't, do, doesn't have to be a, doesn't have to be like a whole day, but like an hour or something. something we like did that. an end user panel. Uh, sorry, oh, okay. A, we did a, a maintainers panel over at the end user um, partner day, and planning on being oh, okay. able to do that again. So happy to be able to take input around that. Okay. Oh, that that actually would be that might be particularly useful. 
we've 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 been trying to get um, end user feedback for for a while with sort of limited success because even though we've we have put a survey together the the end user um, sessions weren't particularly productive but if we if we could get us if the sig could get a slot at the end user session to talk about the work that we've been doing and to maybe gather any feedback or or uh, information on what they would like next um, that would be super useful yeah you know uh, what? happy to be able to take that yeah go ahead Stephen. Oh, you know what I've uh, seen work fairly well? Um, I'm a program chair of the SCALE conference, an open source conference in the U.S. Uh, that draws, say, 4,000 people. And we nominally called this thing a Kubernetes user, birds of a feather. But then the crowd that showed up, about 60, divided up into categories. And it turned out 40% of them wanted to talk about storage. And that was actually a fascinating conversation of end users helping each other, talking about common problems. And then if you're not in that situation of being an end user, you could lurk or contribute as you chose. But that birds of a feather at the scale conference actually drew a fairly large audience. Uh, this was like at end of the day, so it wasn't competing with people wanting to go to talks. But that's another format other than a panel where you have to find you know, unidirectional speakers. And I think the interaction of a birds of a feather where you, at, the, at this point, I'd say there ought to be enough Kubernetes users, some in production, some thinking about getting there, that um, the users themselves could drive just random conversations and have it work out pretty well. How long is that bird of feather session? Well, it's up to us. I mean, we'd have to get uh, it on the agenda. Uh, I'd suggest an hour would be appropriate and maybe 30 minutes, not enough. Really what you do when you open these is you, you go around and everybody does a one minute intro and that alone is going to gobble up 15, 20 minutes, but without some context of who's, you know, coming from where I, I think it doesn't work as well. And that introductions breaks the ice and gets people talking amongst each other. So I'm thinking an hour. And then I think what you're likely to have if it worked well is after your hours up, nothing keeps people from self organizing, going off for, you know, a meal or a beverage, uh, and continuing on if they found it interesting. I think that that is a fantastic idea. I, I don't, Amy, I don't know if we can I will start asking about where we can put that stuff because that is a yeah. very, very nice in between. And we'll see what happens. And also, yep. it would probably encourage more people to join the, the SIG as well. Mm -hmm. Not only that, here's another just brainstorm. But we had a few of these go down at KubeCon San Diego during lunch, kind of unofficial, self organized, put a couple signs out on a couple tables in the general mm -hmm. lunch area and self assemble. And it, it's a little less organized than I. I think the only way those actually were promoted were speakers announcing it during a session saying, hey, we're going to have this uh, event during lunch and look for the signs. And it's a little less formal, but that might work as well. Yeah, I, I attended a few of those and I found them very useful. I mean, quite often people are wandering around looking for someone they recognize to talk to over lunch. Uh, and it's great to just have a big sign saying, you know, if you're interested in topic X, Y, Z, come and sit at this table and you'll have someone to talk to. Uh-huh. Effectively, I, really I think like those turn out to be too. like that birds of a feather, but the table size means you're taking random chances that this group of six or eight are <laughs> going to be interesting conversations. Sure. I mean, you, you kind of take those random chances without the signs too. So <laughs> yeah. it's strictly that. That, that 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 sounds like a really great. All of those sound like a really great ideas. I mean, I, I like the idea for a slot in the end user session. A bio uh, birds of a feather session sounds brilliant too. Um, and maybe we can get some volunteers from the SIG to to uh, to uh, partake in some of those lunch sessions as well. And yeah, I think what if we're going to do it, we should uh, self-identify some people. We don't want a hundred percent end users and somebody should be a moderator. 
Uh, yeah. uh, but so maybe we nominate some people who are going to go there to be organizers. But that role is really just to promote talks amongst the users, in my opinion. Good idea. And this time we'll have logoed hoodies, right, Amy? <laughs> yeah. Now that we have All a right. logo, we might be able to get hoodies. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I've got notes to be able to talk about Birds of Feather and uh, the end user community, and we'll see what else happens. Brilliant. All right. That's okay. all for me. I think in that case, we're, we're done then. Well, one, one last comment on, on that stuff, uh, Alex. Um, do we, I mean, it sounded like we were moving towards almost like a co-sponsorship between the CNCF storage SIG and the Cloud Native Storage Day or, or some deeper involvement. Did we decide we're going to do that? And um, I mean, so, either SIG could uh, like officially endorse it or uh, or, or at least help, you know, choosing choosing the topics. I don't know what form it might take. It doesn't make sense to do it at all. Well, th th that is my question. So, um, the CNS storage day will probably happen on its own, whether or not the SIG is involved. The, the, the question is, if the SIG is involved, what role would they take? Because if the mm -hmm. CNCF is endorsing it, I mean, it, it, it obviously is a good thing. Um, I don't know if that actually translates to the CNCF helps with the sponsorship or anything. Um, but uh, because these, these things are actually pretty pricey to, to yeah. set up. Um, but but the, the, so the, my, my question is, what, what do we think the SIG could contribute to, to, to that storage day? Because actually, as it happens, a lot of the SIG members um, do already participate in the Cloud Native Storage Day in, in, in some form or, or in some form or another. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can just leave it at that then. Uh, I just wanted to clarify what we had decided. So we've decided to just do nothing, no formal. Well, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not saying that we we should decide to do nothing, but um, I think if there's something we think we should do, I'm open to discussion. But I don't think we should say that we're going to do something unless we specifically know oh, well, what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, brainstorm can dump them on the on the agenda for discussion next time. So one would be sponsorship, um, that it is formally sponsored by this SIG to whatever extent we have access to CNCF budget. Um, mm -hmm. The other one is to provide speakers uh, if those are needed. Um, yep. And the third one would be to, you know, assist, you know, so we could, people here, the tech leads or whatever could chair panels or do whatever might be useful. And they would actually be, you know, in their official capacity as tech lead or chairperson of the CNCF storage SIG. Maybe they do that anyway, and they just maybe that would actually add much. I don't know. Um, and the third one could be organizing, you know, helping with the organization. So, so choosing, um, you know, maybe adding some value to the content somehow, um, because we are supposedly the experts in this field. As you say, maybe the people, maybe the the individuals who would do that are doing that anyway, in which case maybe it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> all right. No, that's all really good. Um, um, you know what? I'll take this to the, to the planning for storage day guys and, okay. and raise it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I, I actually, I think that on, on that level, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, did anybody have anything else to raise? Otherwise, I think we're done a couple of minutes early. Great, thanks. All right. Thanks all. All right. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye guys.